Terraform version 1.1 introduced the new cloud block. What is it for? What does it replace? And how do you migrate to it? That's what we're going to answer in today's Terraform Tuesday. <music> Hey everybody, it's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to be talking about the newly introduced cloud block for Terraform 1.1. But before we get into that, two quick things. My Terraform certification guide is about to be updated yet again to include more Terraform cloud content. So if you're looking to get your Terraform associate certification, check out my exam guide down in the description. I also wanted to mention that I am working on a new Pluralsight course, Getting Started with Terraform Cloud. So if you're interested in adapting or adopting Terraform Cloud, then you should definitely check out the course. It should publish by the end of January is what I'm shooting for. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the new Terraform Cloud block. Terraform 1.1 has been released, and it comes with a bunch of new improvements. In a previous video, I talked about the moved block, which is helpful when you're refactoring or redoing your modules. In this one, I want to talk about another improvement, which is the cloud block. So that has been introduced, and that's a replacement for the remote backend when you're using Terraform Cloud. It also introduced an improvement to how the Terraform.workspace value is evaluated when you're using Terraform Cloud, and it's improved the CLI workflow experience when it comes to using Terraform Cloud. Now to understand all of this, I do need to talk a little bit about workspaces. So workspaces are the object in Terraform Cloud within an organization that actually does all of the work. So it's very similar to a workspace in Terraform open source, meaning you can have the same configuration linked to multiple workspaces, and each one has its own state data. And in addition to that, the workspaces you get in Terraform Cloud also do remote operations. So they run the plan and apply on a hosted agent, and they collect all of the logs and have some variable values that are stored locally. The thing that we want to focus on today is how you, through the CLI, work with those workspaces that exist in Terraform Cloud. To understand what's been improved, let's first talk about the old way of doing it, which was the remote backend. The backend in Terraform defines where Terraform will store its state data. If you don't give it a backend, it's going to store that state data locally in a file in the current working directory of your configuration. But you can change that. You can specify a backend. That could be Amazon S3, it could be Azure Storage, or it could be Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise. If you were using one of those two, the way that you would do it is by specifying the backend block inside of a Terraform configuration block, and then the backend type would be remote. So if we're looking at the syntax for this, you'd have backend remote, and then some curly braces, and then a number of arguments. One would be the host name. Where can it go find this instance of Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise? The next one would be organization. What's the name of your organization where these workspaces will exist? And then lastly, a workspaces block. Within the workspaces block, you have two options. You can have a name argument that maps to exactly one workspace in Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise, or you could have used the prefix argument. What the prefix argument does can be a little confusing, but essentially it takes that prefix that you specify there and adds that to the beginning of any workspaces that you create locally. Now, like I said, that can sound a little confusing, so let's go over to a demo environment and I'll show you how this works in practice. Okay, here is my demonstration environment. The files I'm gonna be working with are available on my GitHub. Just look for the repository Terraform Tuesdays and it should be in there. The directory we're working in is 2022.0104 because that's when I created this and it's called Workspace Options. Okay, the first one we wanna look at is backend remote prefix. So this defines exactly what I was talking about before. Let's look at the backend. Okay, here is my configuration. Backend is set to remote. 
The host name is app.terraform.io. That's Terraform Cloud. The organization is one that I created called TacoNet. And then in workspaces, I'm specifying the prefix application dash. So let's, uh, let's kind of figure out what's going on here. I'm already in that directory. So what I'm gonna do is a Terraform init to initialize my Terraform configuration. And it's going to initialize the backend. It's gonna reach out to Terraform Cloud and look for workspaces. What it tells me is I looked at the workspaces in Terraform Cloud and let me flop over to that now. And I don't have any workspaces defined in TacoNet. So it looked for workspaces that start with application dash, didn't find any, and it wants me to create some. Going back to the terminal, let's create a workspace. And the way that you do that is Terraform workspace new, and then we'll give it a name. We'll call this one dev. And what it'll do is reach out to Terraform Cloud and create that workspace. If we go back to the browser, now we see we have a workspace. It's called application dev. Now the workspace that I created from the command line was just called dev. The prefix adds that prefix, but now we have like almost a cognitive dissonance between what I'm seeing at the CLI and what I'm seeing in the browser. In the browser, I have a workspace called application dash dev. And going back to VS code in the terminal, I have a workspace named dev. Boy, that's confusing. Let's create a couple more. So we'll create one called staging, and then I will create one called prod. Okay, prod. Okay, so now I have three workspaces that I've created, and if I do Terraform workspace list, spell it right, it'll show me three workspaces, dev, prod, and staging. If I go over to the browser, oh, I have application dash dev, prod, and staging. Now, if you were doing this in the old, if we go and look at one of these workspaces, it's set to Terraform version 1.1.2. But let's assume that you did this a while ago. So let's go into general, and we're going to change the Terraform version to 1.0.1. And we'll, we'll see why this is important when we get into the migration portion of this. But okay, that is essentially how the prefix worked. But like I said, there's a cognitive dissonance here. There's also another problem here. So let me select the dev workspace. Terraform works, uh, try to spell again. We'll just do that. Select and we'll select the dev workspace. And now I'm gonna run a Terraform apply and we'll do auto approve. There we go. Now, the only thing that's in this configuration is a single output that gives me the value that's stored in terraform.workspace. And this will show you the problem with the previous version of Terraform 1. whatever, anything before 1.1. The problem is the workspace always evaluates to default because when it sends the job to the remote runner, it doesn't create a new workspace, it just uses the default workspace. That's not great if you're relying on that workspace value to do something in your code. Okay, so Terraform 1.1 fixes that issue and it also, also introduces the cloud block. Let's talk about the cloud block now. The cloud block syntax is pretty much the same as the remote backend syntax. So if we're looking at it, instead of backend remote, it now starts with cloud as the block name and there's no additional name label there. And then within there, again, we can do the host name, we can do organization, and then a workspaces block. But now the options for arguments in workspaces are a little different. We still have name if you want to work with a single workspace, or tags, which is a list of strings that define tags that should be associated with that workspace. Now, again, that can be a little confusing, just like the prefix was. So let's go back to the demonstration environment and I'll show you how the tags works. Back in the demonstration environment, let's take a look at the cloud tags directory and look at the backend that's defined here. Okay, I'm using the same organization. Cloud block assumes that you're going to be using Terraform Cloud. So if you don't list a host name, it's gonna use Terraform Cloud. In my workspaces, I have two tags listed security and cloud a, cloud colon AWS. Let's see what happens when I run a Terraform init from this directory. Terraform init, there we go. 
it's going to initialize Terraform Cloud. You note that's different than before where it said initializing the remote backend. So it knows we're using Terraform Cloud right off the bat. It also looked at the workspaces in Terraform Cloud and said, you don't have a workspace that has those two tags associated with it. So would you like to create a new workspace? Sure, I'd love to. So I'll create one called Shared Services. So I'll call it Shared <laughs> Services. And this is the dev instance, let's say. Once I do that, it will create that workspace in Terraform Cloud. If we go back to the browser and go up and look at workspaces, I now have a workspace called Shared Services Deb, and it has the two tags that I listed in my cloud block. See how that's a better experience? Now I know that the workspaces that I see from the command line will match the workspaces that I see up in Terraform Cloud. Additionally, let's say I do a Terraform apply auto approve. Now this has the same thing where the only thing it's gonna feed back to me is the value stored in terraform.workspace. When I do this, I should get back the actual workspace name and not just default. So once again, I can now use that terraform.workspace value when I am writing my code, if that's useful to me. Okay, so we did get that proper workspace value back. Now, you might be wondering, how do you migrate from the remote backend to the new cloud block? And the answer is, it's pretty straightforward. The process for migrating from the remote backend to the cloud block is very straightforward. As you saw, the syntax is almost exactly the same. The only real difference is if you're gonna be working with multiple workspaces with tags instead of a prefix, you have to map from one to the other. Now you might think, oh, well that means I have to go into Terraform Cloud and add tags to all those workspaces. No, you don't have to do that. Terraform is going to take care of it for you. All you have to do is update your code with the cloud block and make sure that all of your workspaces are on Terraform 1.1 or higher. Otherwise, you're going to get an error, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's head back over to the demonstration environment so I can show you how the migration works. Okay, back in the demonstration environment, let's go back into backend remote prefix and we'll take a look at that backend.tf file. Now you'll notice I have a cloud block in here that I commented out, so I'm gonna uncomment that block. There we go. And I'll remove the existing backend remote block. There we go. You can see the cloud block is using the organ same organization. And for workspaces, I'm going to use the tag app colon taco. So that's the tag that will be applied to the existing workspaces. Now, when I do the migration, you might wonder, how does Terraform know what I had before and what workspaces to migrate? And the way that it does that is if we look at the local state file inside the dot Terraform directory, in there, it has the current backend configuration for remote and it has the prefix in there. So when I do the migration, it's going to find all the workspaces in Terraform Cloud that have the prefix application and it's going to attempt to migrate all of those. So that's how it knows which workspaces should be migrated to this Terraform Cloud block. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and run Terraform init. So I'll run Terraform init from here and You'll note it's saying initializing Terraform Cloud, migrating from the backend remote to Terraform Cloud. And it tells us a few things. It's going to find all of those workspaces and apply the tag that I've specified. And it's also going to update my local workspaces to match what's in Terraform Cloud. That's, that's kind of nice, right? So I'll go ahead and say yes to proceed. And this is gonna fail. And the reason it's going to fail is remember we changed the dev workspace to use Terraform 1.0.1? It doesn't like that so much. So before you attempt a migration from the remote backend to Terraform Cloud, this is very important, make sure you update the workspace to use the newer version of Terraform. Let's go over to the workspace and I'll go into the dev workspace. You see it's on Terraform version 1.0.1. We'll go into general settings scroll down and change the Terraform version. And it just has to be 1.1, doesn't matter which version. I'm on 1.1.2 locally, 
but that's okay. I can set this to 1.1.0 and it'll be fine. Going back to the terminal, I'll tr try to run Terraform in it again. It's gonna give me the same migration verbiage it did before. I'll say yes, and it's going to migrate the three workspaces. Now, if you're following along, you do have to run a Terraform apply on each of the workspaces before you do the migration. Otherwise, there's no state data to migrate, and it'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no workspace. So migration is now complete. If we go back to the browser and go back to the listed workspaces, we can see all three workspaces are now tagged with the app colon taco tag. And going back to the terminal, if I do a Terraform workspace list, workspace list, now my workspaces are have a matching name between what is up in Terraform Cloud and what's local. So we have successfully migrated our workspaces from the remote backend to Terraform Cloud. The new Terraform Cloud block is there to embrace tags instead of prefixes for working with multiple workspaces. It also removes the cognitive dissonance between having a different workspace locally than the name that you would see in Terraform Cloud. The other reason I think they introduced the Terraform Cloud block is to make way for future improvements that'll be coming from Terraform Cloud. Instead of having it tied to this backend idea, now it's tied to this larger cloud idea, and well, that's kind of nice. The other things that were improved was the CLI workflow. You, you saw it was very user-friendly. It told you exactly what it was going to do. And also the Terraform.workspace now evaluates properly. Quick reminder, if you're going to do the migration, you need to make sure all your workspaces that you're migrating are on Terraform 1.1 or newer. That's gonna do it for this video. If you happen to be watching in January of 2022, I wanna let you know that the Hashi Talks call for papers is currently open. So if you have something you want to present about when it comes to HashiCorp, definitely submit your talk. It's probably going to get accepted. I also want to plug my podcast, Day 2 Cloud. If you haven't listened to it, we talk to technical professionals and people in the cloud industry about cloudy things. I think it's pretty engaging and interesting, and maybe you will as well. Links to both Hashi Talks and the Day 2 Cloud podcast are down in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, why not like? Why not subscribe? Hey, I'd, you know, I'd appreciate that. And if you want to reach out to me, you can leave a comment or ping me on Twitter. It's Ned1313. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. All right, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. When I eat Cheetos or anything that's got a lot of dust to it, I eat it with chopsticks because that slows down how fast I eat them. And it also keeps the dust off my fingers. So pro tip for you, eat your Cheetos with chopsticks.